This lesson deals with violence and war. Now, don't think I have to define what war is. It becomes an ethical issue, of course, because it does involve violence and typically extreme violence. War has always been with us as a human species, as far as we know, and any student of history can attest to that. And uh, the only things that seem to have changed are, are the means by which we engage in these wars. The technology we've developed has enabled us to to be more destructive and war does necessarily involve violence it necessarily involves death injury uh, loss of property uh, and other sorts of losses uh, to people who are combatants people who are actually fighting in the war and maybe choose to fight or maybe are called uh, up to fight and others who are non-combatants in in a combat situation or nearby who can be killed or injured by war. So, as you can see, a lot of ethical issues are going to arise just because of the nature of war itself. Now, a couple of views are, are discussed here which form two poles and we might consider them to be extremes when we're talking about war. The idea is related to realism and militarism. And realism is the idea that if a country or nation has to go to war, then that's their decision and they should use any means necessary to win that war. The goal is victory at any cost. Militarism perhaps goes a little beyond that and says that the highest form of glory is to be achieved in combat, that only through uh, such battle can a human being realize uh, the fullest kind of nobility available to a human being. So. Militarism sort of makes war good in itself, in a way, and something to, to be sought after. The other extreme is, is pacifism, and you may have heard of this, and this is an idea that, that all violence is to be shunned, is to be um, not acceptable, uh, that we should use nonviolent means to sell, settle any disagreements between nations or between individuals, and that violence is never justified. Now, seeking to find a middle ground between militarism and realism and pacifism is a view known as just war theory. And this goes back uh, a long time, and uh, Thomas Aquinas might be one of the more famous philosophers who developed this view. And it is still in practice and still uh, discussed when uh, we have debates about whether we're going to go to war. Uh, as a nation, and once we're in a war, how we conduct ourselves. So there's several components to, to just war theory, and we're going to go through them all briefly. And there's two major categories. The first is called jus ad bellum, and it's the uh, Latin terms for justice towards war. So before we've even gone into a conflict, we have to uh, according to just war theory, settle certain things to make sure that our going into war is justified. That is, we are morally permitted to go into war. First is that the cause has to be just. We're going to use force. We're going to use violence. There has to be strong reasons for us to go. It can't just be self-interest or personal gain. It has to be something higher than that. Uh, protecting the innocent, protecting ourselves, those sorts of things. The next is legitimate authority. Whoever is initiating the war has to have the authority to do so. Uh, in our nation, uh, we in invest those powers in the federal government, uh, particularly in, in the president and, and in Congress, uh, to be able to decide whether or not we're going to enter into a violent conflict or war. Uh, the next criteria is uh, proportionality. And... That is the idea that going into war has to be uh, a better outcome than not going into war, uh, if you will, that this has to be the proper response to whatever it is that's going on. Uh, next is the idea of last resort, that we have to have exhausted diplomatic means, we have to exhaust negotiations before we enter into war, that this has to be our last resort, we have no other option on the table. 
And finally, uh, in the USAP Bellum category is the idea of right intention, is that we're going into war just for this reason, and when we get in there, that's what we're going to hope to achieve, is what our objective we set it, have set out to achieve. And so taking all these things together, the idea is that, well, if you could satisfy each of these criteria, then you would be justified in going to war, and you can consider the war, at least initially, a just war. The next category in talking about just war theory is what is called jus in bello, and that is justice in war. If we've satisfied the criteria for entering into a war, then we can ask, well, in our conduct of the war, are we behaving in a way that's morally permissible? Are we conducting a just war? And so there's three criteria here that are discussed. One is proportionality. That is, we should use no more force than is necessary to achieve the goal so that one thing this would do would be to reduce uh, collateral damage. Related to that is the idea of discrimination, that if you're fighting a just war, you use violence against non-combatants only. That, say, uh, people who aren't fighting in the war, uh, who are civilians, or people who are, say, uh, health care providers who are working in the war, what these people we term innocent civilians, that we are to discriminate and not use violence directly against them. And finally is the, the idea of intrinsically evil means, and the idea is that such things should not be used, uh, that there are certain um, activities that one would do in a war that would seem to be uh, bad in themselves. Um, and some people put some things in this category that other people might not use, like certain forms of chemical warfare uh, or torture or other things like that. People would say, well, no, this would be uh, something that's evil in itself and should never be used in the conduct of a war, even if it were to help one win the war. So looking at just war theory, we have the, uh, the use ad bellum, the justice of going into war, and then the use in bello, the justice when we're actually uh, conducting the war. And so, again, this is supposed to be charting a middle path uh, between militarism and pacifism to say, okay, this is the morally justified reasons to go to war. And again, we could argue about this, uh, whether or not we think that war is ever justified. And we could look at historically look at cases where we might think that nations have gone into war and not met the criteria of just war theory or have conducted themselves in a war in a way that was unjust. Of course, these are live issues and not just really ones for academic debate because these actually touch over into legal uh, and uh, historical uh, fact. So I'm just going to mention these current issues without discussing them very much. And you can you know, do the reading and get an idea of the moral issues that are brought up. Of course, we've covered a lot of different moral theory in this class and hopefully have become a little bit more sensitive to moral issues and where they arise. Uh, there's the issue of, of terrorism, and of course terrorism uh, by its very nature violates the principles of just war because typically non-combatants, that is innocent civilians, are targeted uh, for terror uh, in, in a terrorist activity. Uh, some people consider uh, use of drones and certain kinds of targeted killing to be unjust. There's weapons of mass destruction, and again, people could ask whether or not these are morally justified means. Um, questions of war crimes and whether human rights should be protected uh, during a war. And, of course, many of these would be violations of just war theory. Uh, and when we talked about it, I talked about intrinsically evil means, I mentioned torture there, too. And so certainly one could give a utilitarian justification uh, for torture. There may be deontological reasons or reasons related to duty or, or to mercy or something like that that would preclude torture. So, war, as the song says, what is it good for? And that concludes our lesson today on violence and war.